Myths about seat belts. You may have heard people tell you different things about safety belts. Maybe you've heard that it's unsafe to wear a seat belt or that you don't need to wear one if you re not driving far. However, this is simply not true. You should buckle up every time you drive. Below are some of the common myths associated with wearing a safety belt. Wearing a seat belt can cause you to be trapped inside a car if you crash. These types of scare tactics are generally associated with cars that are submerged in water or start on fire. However, these types of collisions occur less often than you think. Even if they do, it takes less than a second to remove your seat belt. If you don't wear your seat belt, you could be knocked unconscious and have an even more difficult time escaping from your vehicle. You don't need to wear a seat belt on short trips. Only long ones. Buckle your seat belt every time you drive no matter the distance you are traveling. Approximately half of the traffic fatalities occur within 25 miles of your home. They can occur traveling less than 40 miles per hour. It's not worth the risk to not buckle up. I've heard of someone being thrown from a vehicle where they walked away without a scratch. While this may have happened, it is extremely rare. Your chance of surviving a crash is five times greater if you remain in the vehicle rather than being thrown from it. No matter which direction you are hit from, a seat belt will keep you from being thrown from the car into the path of another vehicle. I'm making a quick trip. I don't need a car seat for my child. It's too much a hassle. Deaths of children are preventable when it comes to car crashes. Studies have found that 8 out of 10 children who die in a car crash could have survived had they been properly restrained in a child safety seat. Car seats reduce injuries and help save lives. If a child is not properly restrained, they can be thrown from the car or they can fly back and forth within the vehicle. Always take the time to buckle your children safely no matter how short the distance you are. Traveling is. Many drivers, despite how careful they are, are likely to be involved in at least one traffic crash in their life. Since there is no way to eliminate the chance of being involved in a crash, you can at least protect yourself by buckling up every time you drive. In a crash, your car will stop but your body continues moving at the same speed you were traveling until the time when you hit something. Whether it's a window or the dashboard, when moving at 30 miles per hour, this would be like hitting the pavement from the top of a three-story building. If you are struck from the side, you could be pushed back and forth across the seats. A seat belt, both the shoulder and lap belt, will help you stay in one place. Airbag safety. Airbags can save lives when used properly. Almost everyone who has died from airbag-related injuries was improperly restrained or not restrained at all. Airbags were introduced in the late 1980s and since then, have saved thousands of lives. Driver deaths have gone down nearly 14% since that time. Airbags, however, can pose a serious risk to children who are 12 years old and under. Children 12 and under should always be properly restrained and ride in the back seat if possible. If a child must ride in the front seat, turn the airbag on the passenger side off and move the seat as far away from the airbag as possible. If an airbag deploys with a child in the seat, they can suffocate or be seriously injured rather than being saved. Proper use of airbags. Keep in mind that just because your vehicle is equipped with airbags doesn't mean you can skip. Wearing your seat belt. Airbags and safety belts are designed to work together. Always buckle your safety belt. Position your seat at least 10 inches away from the steering wheel to provide the maximum amount of protection. Position your hands at the 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock positions on the steering wheel to allow the airbag to Deploy unobstructed. Driving in emergencies and disasters. In times of emergency, people often react incorrectly, either staying with or abandoning their cars at the wrong time. This mistake can be fatal. 
After almost every disaster, search and rescue teams find victims who might have survived if they had known whether to stay with or leave their cars during these times of emergency. The following are safety tips for drivers in various types of emergencies. This information should be kept in the glove compartment of your car. In any situation, the most important rule is to remain calm. And don't panic. Earthquake. Stay in your car. Bring the car to a halt as soon as safely possible. And then remain in the car until the shaking has stopped. The car's suspension system will make the car shake violently during the quake. But it is still a safe place to be. Avoid stopping near or under buildings, overpasses, and utility wires. When the quaking has stopped, proceed cautiously, avoiding bridges and other elevated structures which might have been damaged by the quake and could be damaged further by aftershocks. Hurricane. Evacuate early. Flooding can begin well before a hurricane nears land. Plan to evacuate early and keep a full tank of gas during the hurricane season. Learn the best evacuation route before a storm forms and plan with friends or relatives inland to stay with them until the storm has passed. Never attempt to drive during a hurricane or until the all clear is given after the storm. Flash flooding can occur after a hurricane has passed. Never attempt to drive on flooded roads or in flooded areas. Avoid driving on coastal and low-lying roads. Storm surge and the hurricane caused flooding are erratic and may occur with little or no warning. Flood. Get out of the car. Never attempt to drive through water on a road. Water can be deeper than it appears. And water levels can rise very quickly. Cars can float dangerously for at least a short distance. A car can also be buoyed by floodwater and then swept downstream during a flood. Floodwater can erode roadways. And a missing section of road or even a missing bridge may not be visible with water running over. The area. If a car stalls in floodwater. Get out quickly and move to higher ground. The floodwater may continue to rise and the car can be swept away at any moment. Remember that it only takes about two feet of moving water, and your car can be buoyed and carried away. Source, United States Search and Rescue Task Force. Most vehicles will only float on the surface of the water for 30 to 60 seconds. Therefore, the occupants must make every attempt to bail out of the vehicle immediately once the vehicle enters the water with sufficient depth to submerge the vehicle. Vehicles with all windows closed will float longer than those with all windows open, providing a greater chance of escape or rescue. Vehicles with engines in front will descend engine first at a steep angle. In water 15 feet deep or more, such a vehicle may rest on its top at the end of the descent. Doors cannot be opened until the water pressure inside the car is equal to that outside. When the vehicle is filled, doors can be opened if there is no structural damage. Wearing a seatbelt will increase the chances of occupants surviving the initial impact with the water. The best escape technique from a vehicle floating on the surface with its wheels downward is through open windows before the water reaches the window level. Water rushing into the vehicle through an open window at the moment the window goes below the surface makes escape through that window extremely difficult. Occupants should wait until the water in the car is above the upper level of the window, which will occur rapidly once the vehicle begins to submerge. If the car sinks too rapidly for occupants to escape while the vehicle is still on the surface, the occupants should move to the rear passenger compartment to breathe trapped air while planning their escape route. Escape can be accomplished by opening either the nearest door or window when the pressure on the inside is equal to the outside pressure. Another option is to push out the rear window. This can be accomplished by placing both feet against the window and pushing. Also. The rear window is usually of tempered glass which can be broken and disintegrated with a hammer, center punch, or similar strong pointed object. 
Source, Life Saving Resources Inc. Heavy rain frequently causes flash floods in Arizona washes. Do not cross flooded washes. Water can stall your engine, hide potholes, and carry your vehicle downstream. Estimate the depth of the water by looking at parked cars or other objects along the road. Watch what other vehicles are doing. Two vehicles should not meet in deep water. One should go entirely through before another starts from the other direction. This reduces the possibility of stalling caused by waves of water. You may be charged for emergency response expenses if you or your vehicle needs to be removed from a flooded road. Driving through the water must be done at a slow and steady speed. Applying the brakes gently with your left foot may help keep them dry. Check your brakes after leaving the water to see if they will stop the car. If the brakes are wet, they may suddenly grab or pull to one side. Dry them by accelerating slowly while gently holding down the brake pedal. The best escape technique from a vehicle floating on the surface with its wheels downward is through open windows before the water reaches the window level. Water rushing into the vehicle through an open window at the moment the window goes below the surface makes escape through that window extremely difficult. Occupants should wait until the water in the car is above the upper level of the window, which will occur rapidly once the vehicle begins to submerge. If the car sinks too rapidly for occupants to escape while the vehicle is still on the surface, the occupants should move to the rear passenger compartment to breathe trap air while planning their escape route. Escape can be accomplished by either opening the nearest window or opening the door when the pressure on the inside is equal to the outside pressure. Another option is to push out the rear window. This can be accomplished by placing both feet against the window and pushing. Also, the rear window is usually of tempered glass which can be broken and disintegrated with a hammer, center punch, or similar strong pointed object. Source, Life Saving Resources Inc. Heavy rain frequently causes flash floods in Arizona washes. Do not cross flooded washes. Water can stall your engine, hide potholes, and carry your vehicle downstream. Estimate the depth of the water by looking at parked cars or other objects along the road. Watch what other vehicles are doing. Two vehicles should not meet in deep water. One should go entirely through before another starts from the other direction. This reduces the possibility of stalling caused by waves of water. You may be charged for emergency response expenses if you or your vehicle needs to be removed from a flooded road. Driving through the water must be done at a slow and steady speed. Applying the brakes gently with your left foot may help keep them dry. Check your brakes after leaving the water to see if they will stop the car. If the brakes are wet, they may suddenly grab or pull to one side. Dry them by accelerating slowly while gently holding down the brake pedal. Liability for emergency responses in flood areas. A driver of a vehicle who drives around barriers or barricades that are in place due to flooding can be held liable for any expenses incurred to remove the driver, passengers and the vehicle that becomes inoperable on a public street or highway. Expenses of an emergency response means reasonable costs directly incurred by agencies that make an appropriate emergency response to an incident. 